Welcome to episode two of Dinner with a Winner presented by Second Swing Golf, where we sit down with a past tour winner for a champion's dinner. And today we're at McCormick's Pub here in Wyzetta, Minnesota, and gonna be joined by Tim Heron. Tim is a four-time PGA Tour winner. He's played on tour, both on the PGA Tour and the PGA Tour Champions now for many years, and he loves this place. So we're gonna talk to him all about McCormick's Pub, and he's gonna share some stories about his playing days out on tour. So let's go meet Tim now. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Chef. Yeah, enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Appreciate, yeah. It. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, Tim, Tim, we yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Right. Well, here we go. We're here. Yeah, I know. We've got the McCormick's. Guinness. McCormick's. We've got the food. Uh, this looks fantastic, first of all. Um, first of all, I got to ask, why did you, what, what's so special about this place? That Okay. You know, well, Tim McCormick, Tim McCormick I've known for a long time playing junior golf and things like that. He's from Hutchinson, Minnesota. All the big Irish pubs are kind of in St. Paul, but this one holds up to all, mm -hmm. all the Irish pubs in yeah. St. Paul. This is our West Side Irish pub, and um, the food is unbelievable. After being on the road for over a month, yeah, I crave coming here, and I usually <laughs> come for lunch, and and the pint of Guinness. I mean, he pours the best Guinness in town. It certainly looks like it, yeah. So we've so got. So I love this place. You know, I when I'm on the road, I'm thinking about McCormick's. I go, I need a nice piece of walleye you yeah. know uh you know you get lonely on the road and you know this is like home so i gotta ask um choice of food with the walleye dinner um what was the, i mean you have that a ton of times and before and you did you enjoy it or what well you know it's a minnesota staple walleye yeah. mm -hmm. i figure we're you know yeah. there's a lot of people that are going to be watching this all over the, the country yeah and this is a Minnesota staple, the walleye. So I of thought course. I'd get the walleye, and I have no problem eating walleye. I could eat it every yeah I every guess. day. So I, I got, see you got the yeah, burger. I got the classic McCormick's burger. So I'm excited. About it's amazing. It. Um, I've heard phenomenal things about it. Um, but yeah, to your point about the walleye, I mean, we're out. We're looking right now at uh, I got a frozen Lake Minnetonka yeah, exactly. right now here in January. But I'm ready to eat. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, and then we'll talk some golf. I like that. All right. All right, well, Tim, that was that was. I mean, I'm very full. I yeah, I am fantastic. too. Fantastic. I mean, that the burger. Did was you take a breath? Awesome. Did I you take. The breath? I barely did. <laughs> yeah, I barely did. Um, the walleye also looked fantastic. So it was great. Um, I think that's uh, sort of the recommendation, right? You come to Minnesota, you swing by Lake Minnetonka, and come to McCormick's and, and get to have the walleye. walleye, have a Guinness, <laughs> and have a Guinness. Yeah, like what I said, they pour the best Guinness in town. Translating now to um, your golf career. Um, we talked a little bit kind of off camera about how golf has always been in your in your family, you know, from really since day one for you. So is there, was that always kind of in your, I guess, plans was to be well, a golfer or be in golf? Yeah, I guess so. I thought I was always going to be in golf. I worked at Woodhill here in Wyzetta okay. uh, starting at 15. I was at Timber Creek probably at 14. I grew up caddying. My dad was a good golfer and... Uh, played a lot of golf, which is weird being a Minnesotan, right? But mm -hmm. uh, what I tell kids, I go, you you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And, you know, you got some time time to get kind of um, away from the game in the winter because yeah. you can't do much. You can right. go to the dome, simulators, and stuff like that, but that's maybe a few hours a right. day. That's not six to eight hours a day And also it wasn't, I guess, when you were, um, you know, in your youth, there wasn't those... So yeah, well, really I mean, I'm there. not that old. There was well, a golf well, dump, but we to... had a simulator. Yeah, no, no, okay. we didn't have a simulator. Okay. But there, had... was, there was an indoor facility the, for yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, we maybe, had the golf dome. Shot we had me. the Diana Golf Dome. Okay. There was actually one, and I don't know if I really went to it, the one in, uh, now it's soccer, but uh, the one in Long Lake. Okay. I think there was one oh, yeah. in St. Paul, too. I have actually too. seen that before. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, yeah, because it's like, it's a, I know it's a conversation that I was always having with, like, my 
my parents when I was growing up, I'm in South Dakota, but it was still the same thing. I was playing golf all during the during the year, and it was either trying to persuade sun up them to sun to, down. Yeah, right? oh, all yeah, the time. Yeah. And they they would drive me out to the course, yeah. and they pick me up. And but then you get a break, you know. And I see a lot of kids kind of fizzle out, or they get their their peak would be high school golf or mm-hmm. early in college, and maybe because they played so much golf early on they didn't experience other parts of sure. life like girlfriends or boyfriends yeah. or whatever yeah. you know and doing different things mm-hmm. going to movies and stuff like that because you know it'd stay late till about 9 30 10 o'clock in the middle of summer I mean, yeah we'd play till 10 right so right um yeah so you know in the winter you kind of tried to get your academics done yeah. get the grades up so <laughs> mom and dad weren't didn't get mad and then you'd go play golf once once the snow, you right. know, once the, the snow ground. melts, yeah, courses exactly. thaw a little bit. Yeah, that's that's exactly. fascinating. Um, at what point did you? Because obviously, yeah, there came a point where you know you maybe realized, hey, I'm good enough to maybe do this at a high level professionally. Is there a moment that that happened, or did you just kind of realize it over maybe, you know, playing junior competitions? You just kind of realized, hey, I'm beating a lot of people. I mean, I I was pretty good in high school and junior here in Minnesota. I didn't play a lot of national. I did play as junior. I played two. I might have played one or two. And I remember I played at Mirfield Village, so that was pretty oh, cool. And I yeah, made the cut cool. to get into match play when I was, I think I was 15. So I think I've played a couple of juniors. Okay. And so from there, I uh, signed with University of New Mexico. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go south, you know. Um, I had offers at University of Minnesota, which, you know, growing up here, you know, I wasn't going to say anything bad about Minnesota, but I right. wanted to go south and yeah. see what I could do in golf. Sure. So I go south and it's 5,000 feet. It actually snows more there than it does <laughs> here. But we have, in New Mexico, we had a lot better weather. That would yeah. just be a big storm rolling through, you know, it was Might on the melt south right side. Yeah it, yeah, it melts within a couple of days. So you're playing right. golf in a couple of days. So, but it's also good, like, like that, I could get my grades up. So I wasn't always on, sure. uh, yeah. on the border of uh, <laughs> making sure that I was eligible or not right. eligible. Right. So. I, I went to New Mexico and uh, and I remember driving down and I talked to my dad and my dad goes, you know, if you can play one or two, he's got a great schedule. You get to play in Hawaii if you can play one or two. And I was playing second man my freshman year. Wow. So um, I just kind of got into it and knew that I could beat some of the kids in the South and I was fresh. I was ready to do it. Yeah. And Maybe at that point you knew like, okay, maybe, yeah. maybe this can be a career. Yeah, um, I think probably um, my sophomore year as an All American, and then my last two as first team All American. So I was top yeah. ten best players in the in the country. Yeah, and, that'll. Um, it's a pretty good yeah, kind of in NCAA. So I knew resume. I was going to play kind of my junior year. I know I was sure. going to try professionally. Sure. So I also wanted to ask you about the Walker Cup. Because yeah. so I was reading about it before this. Um, were you born? I was. I was preparing. Uh, I was not born at this. Moment. You were not born of it. Um, oh gosh, so ninety three Walker Cup. I was. An, I'm a ni- born ninety five. So okay. we're close. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, first of all, it was in Minnesota. It was at New yeah. Um, but I saw that it was a late change. So I, I I saw something like it was supposed to be at Chicago Golf Club and they changed it. I didn't know they that. Didn't know that. Okay. No. So I was, when I made it, I thought they already had it in place. Okay, and maybe that was the case. I didn't, you know. But either way, I wanted to get your reaction then to, to, I guess, finding out that you would be on the Walker Cup team when it's being held in Minnesota. Yeah. You know, about 15 minutes or so from where you grew up. So I played a lot of amateur golf in the summer to try to make the Walker Cup, but I, I probably was like my. Uh, my average, my scoring average is probably third or fourth best in the country. Okay. And Vinny Giles was the captain, and I was a pick. So I was real uh, fortunate, and it, it was Minnesota. And I got a couple funny stories. Uh, I asked Alan Doyle, who was one of the straightest hitters. He used to, he was from the East Coast, and he, he had a hockey shot. He was from Boston, and okay. he had a hockey swing. But he was the straightest ball striker I think I've ever seen. He hit it really low, whatever. And I asked him to play, and he goes, no, I don't want to play out of the woods. I'm playing with Justin Leonard. And him and Justin played. So I played with uh, John Harris yep. from Minnesota, mm-hmm. who we had kind of similar games where we could hit it pretty far and, yeah. and kind of maneuver it out of the woods. So we became great partners. And, yeah, we won our 
our match. They had to change it because of weather. So we only mm -hmm. played one alternate. I saw and this, then maybe a the singles, first session or something like that was rained out or something but we, like that. We killed them. I mean, we had one of the better teams, yeah. I think, that's ever played. Yeah, I did see the final I mean, score we, was yeah. 19 to 5 yeah, or something pretty like good. that. That's... So to make it small world, my oldest son plays at New Mexico. And yeah. I didn't play this guy. I wish I knew his last name, but I didn't play him. But they call him Twisty. His name's Oliver. Oliver Twist. <laughs> but they, uh, he's from England, the kid, and he plays at New Mexico. Oh. And his dad was on the Walker Cup, too. Oh. So we're going to have world. to research that. I've yeah. just thought of that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's a small world. Fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Really cool. Yeah, that has to be really cool to yeah. be putting on the red, So white, that, and that just shows, you know, golf community and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, and I know we've talked to you a little bit. Like, yeah. the, there's a kind of a surprise. If you maybe, I, I'm, you know, having traveled all over the country to play golf professionally, I'm sure you've kind of maybe experienced this, but like people are maybe surprised at how much people here like golf in Minnesota. Because yeah, it's amazing. It's, and there are so many courses. I, 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 I believe I heard this from a couple years ago, and it might still be true. The most golf courses per capita. That's is, probably is, true. Is I've heard that. So that many, or Michigan or yeah. There's one of just those. so many courses, and then once I mean, you try to get a tee time at, at a public course in the summer here, and you got to be a week in advance. Well, it was the week before Christmas. We were having a brown Christmas this year. Yep. And all my kids went out and played Pioneer <laughs> Creek, and yeah. and they were full. They had a. They decided to make it a shotgun at eleven yeah. o'clock because it didn't warm up till probably ten or eleven because yeah. of the frost delay, and they piled everyone. Uh, it was two groups on each tee. So yeah, start. Got, so I mean, they had that place was packed. Yeah. So and it's probably what like 40, 45 degrees out there at that I point. I think if I remember, it got to about fifty two. Okay, that that's yeah, pretty. Yeah. That's they, pretty they spicy a couple. for Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty in good. December, yeah. but um, now. Other thing I wanted to transition to because I saw that you won the Honda Classic in your first season with the Tour Card, the PGA Tour, and it was a wire to wire win. Uh, talk to me about like the, I guess being in the zone like that because I, I've heard I've heard other players talk about it where they they don't you know I don't know if you're the type that watches leaderboards or you just kind of keep focused but. There has to be it has to be a, an other world experience to be that far in the zone where you just you set foot on the first tee you're in the lead almost immediately and you just you're just up well, at the I, top I have the whole time. Two stories. I was in the locker room bank at the Honda, and I overheard Nick Price, who mm -hmm. was kind of my, I mean, I he was like my hero or the yeah. guy that I looked up to. Sure. And he goes, "Why haven't they taken the pro am scores off the board?" Because I was ten under after the. <laughs> and the next best was like four under. Oh, gosh. And uh, it was really windy and a, a very hard golf course down mm -hmm. Eagle Trace. And, uh, yeah, one wire to wire. Um, and that's where I met uh, Dr. Bob Rotella. And it's funny because he said, oh, I was smiling and having a good time. And he goes, you know, you got to get to that place. But I remember I was nervous as hell. And, I mean... I mean, this is where I wanted to be, so there was a lot of pressure. Just yeah. like I'm finally here. Now I got it. Yeah. Now, now I got to do it. Yeah. So there's a lot of things going in your mind, like thinking, but to be able to overcome that, I remember it rained maybe four inches the last day. We played. I played the last round. It started during raining the on, yeah, during the final round, and I was hoping for a three round. They mm. just cancel the last round, right. and I'd win by five or six. Yeah. But I ended up playing it, and I think that helped my career. That I won seventy-two holes. No one gave it to me. I yeah. I won it, and and that's when I, everyone called me a mutter. And you know, that's growing up in Minnesota, South Dakota, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Right. You know, playing in the mud and crap. You just, oh yeah. You just if there's a day to go out and play. You play yeah, you kind of right? you yeah. kind of learn a little bit of how to. So now I'm I'm a lot more soft. You know, I live in Arizona and. You know, the joints aren't feeling as good. You don't have the range of motion. Right. So now I, you know, I like it 70. Oh, yeah. I well, played enough in the rain and the Sure. The I mean, stuff. anybody likes it yeah, 70 exactly. and sunny, you know. Exactly. But yeah. um, it is, there's probably an element to that, too, of, uh, like you said, you grew up around here. And at that point for, I mean, you probably get like three months of the year here that are like truly every day you can go out and play golf. And yeah. it's nice out. Otherwise, it's kind of a gamble if it's going to yeah. be good enough to go out 
you might have to deal with some cold weather, some rain, so exactly. snow maybe. But you know, playing in hard weather, you just have to kind of get in the elements yeah. and get wet. Mm -hmm. Just go get wet. If you're working so hard not to get wet, I mean, you're focused on the wrong thing. Okay, just get wet true. and go play golf. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just make sure your hands stay dry. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, I now on the Champions Tour, I play like a ping hoofer bag and those things are amazing. They don't, they don't get wet. Like the technology nowadays mm -hmm. with, with equipment, even rain equipment and things like that. I still play in a sweater though. I'm yeah. kind of old school. I have a hard time moving in like mm -hmm. water, like kind of the, the or, rain gear, yeah, type rain of gear yeah. stuff. So, but like, the equipment, like the golf equipment, the grips, I mean, the technology has been amazing for sure. years. Sure. Um, and now I'm curious about this now. So you've you mentioned you've already mentioned some of the guys that you've played with. You mentioned like sort of Nick Price was one of the players you looked up to um, over the years in playing on tour. Was there any players or player or maybe a player or players that you love to play with? Kind of favorite guys. Well, to a guy that had like. I mean, I played with Seve at the Masters. That's cool. He had a total, like, aura about him. Like, yeah. he was just, like, cool. Um, Jesper's a really good friend. He, sure. He's really, I think he's cool. Mm -hmm. He's awesome yeah. because he's so different. And yeah. He doesn't try to be different. He's just different, That's you know? And he's he is. smart and intelligent, but his brain's working, so he has a hard time sometimes having conversations. He's an awesome guy. And then, uh, you know, Pete Stewart. He had yeah. this unbelievable presence to him and i played a lot of golf with Payne stewart and we'd give each other a bunch of shit back yeah. and forth but uh yeah he was a great guy so yeah. and i mean i can go on and on about the older guys it was fun fuzzy zeller i played tons with fuzzy sure. and john daly at the masters in practice rounds but i never got any practice in we were playing money games <laughs> and they were always the first one off and they just wanted to fly around in three hours and get out of there yeah. I'm like, I got to kind of work the greens. I mean, I don't want to be behind Spaniards. I mean, that's usually six, seven hours. But, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I got to work the greens a little bit. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anyways, but that was fun and an experience. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool that you, and yeah. it's cool that you get in to play with some of these guys, like, multiple times throughout yeah. the years. I mean, so Fuzzy Zeller was those amazing. Relationships. Yeah. I mean, really funny, really good guy. Great for the game. I don't think people talk about him enough. Mm -hmm. Um, just because what he's done for the game and yeah. how approachable he is and people and being out. He just loves being out and actually having a Guinness, probably. Yeah. 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 See, oh, that's, we still have Guinness. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's the it's Guinness, the drink of, of golfers. Because it's, uh, it's a drink of this golfer. Yeah, I suppose. How about this? <laughs> I, I, it's cool. You go in the restaurant on the, there's a couple walls in there that you can't, there's every piece of the wall, every little inch of the wall is covered in some sort of Guinness, uh, you know, me yeah. a memorabilia yeah, or, exactly. or propaganda yeah. or something. Um, you talked about the Masters. I wanted to ask about the major championships. Um, you have, I think you've, you've finished top 15 in three of them. Um, but is there one of them that you liked playing the most um, out of the four? So we talked about weather. Yeah. Um, the British Open's amazing if you get just some decent weather. Yeah. Once it gets horizontal rain and yeah. I mean I played Carnoustie year the John Vanderbilt year yeah and I shot I remember I shot 81 69 was in the top 10 after two days <laughs> so I mean it was amazing I remember I thought there was a dryer I had to do some laundry so I had to hang them up on the pin line you know on, on the mm. back I mean this is old school yeah, you guys have never even seen this so you pin them up and I get back and all my all my clothes are slanted the way the wind the direction's wind. going. <laughs> yeah, so it was a pretty crazy place. Yeah, I've... Carnoustie was pretty hard, and I think uh, the senior opens going back to Carnoustie this year. So, oh wow, be fun if I get healthy to mm -hmm. you know go over there and play one more year. Maybe get a, maybe uh, bring one of my kids over to Caddy. Yeah, yeah. that would be really cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I, you've heard all these stories about how players are dealing with the elements out there, and then you know it, every year as a fan, I am hoping that. The open is filled with rain and wind. And yeah, stuff. now and sometimes the players sometimes aren't they, for that, but. yeah, but now sometimes it gets so windy that they stop play. If the ball start yeah, rolling, that has happened. So um, it, it happened at um, St Andrews mm -hmm. one year. I remember like uh, well, St Andrews, Rory McIlroy yeah. was huddled over. There was but one I played a couple three, years ago. I think, at 
St. Andrews. Yeah, that's gotta be cool. Yeah, that's really sort cool. of a bucket list one for me. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Really cool to go watch it there too. Yeah, unbelievable town, beautiful. Yeah, I, that, that's a bucket yeah, list for old me. School. You you hear all these stories, and then actually there was the one at St. Andrews. Like now, it's with the wind whipping the way it was, you know, and it was firm. You know, players are hitting the ball 400 yards yeah, because they're going downwind. Um, yeah. It's a very different experience playing there, I imagine, versus really any of the other major tournaments because uh, it's the course totally is set different. up different, and obviously the conditions are typically pretty different. And the hardest is people don't talk about is the the flags are shorter. I so did not know visually, this. it looks like you're farther away. So you're always really? going to your caddy. Are you sure we only got 130 yards? You know, because Odd. it looks like it's 150. They go, no, no, the flags. So the are flags shorter. and at the open are, are taller. No, they're shorter. Or shorter. Yeah. Okay, interesting. I they're shorter know. because it blows so hard. Um, the other ones would blow. Yeah, we'd move the holes around and stuff. Mm. You know, or the. I never cylinders. thought about that. Yeah, interesting. That's there another, you go. I tell you something. You, old oh, guy. Hey, I've yeah. already learned a lot. Yeah, old guy. I've already yeah. learned a lot. But that's actually because, like back then, actually, well, still now, technically on tour, you got to step off yardages. There's no yeah. range finder. Well, there's range finders for the PGA now. Yeah, but there's no range finders. That, and the U.S. Open, I think. Is there now? Okay, I think so. But I know that was certainly not a thing back then. So that type of thing would, I know for me, that would throw me off completely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I wanted to also ask you about like getting into how golf now maybe is different today. We talked a little bit about simulators, launch monitors and things, how different that is maybe. I wanted to like, cause I've asked players this before, um, and I've, especially Larry Bobcar, fitter here at Second Swing, um, about how he- And would, I grew he, up with Larry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And he would fit players back then just by watching them hit shots on the range. Tell me about that experience when you were like trying to get clubs in the bag maybe you know, so, back, back then when you didn't have launch monitors, it was simply you hit, hit a shot and you kind of, yeah, based on your feel and how the shot looked. No, there is pros, the pros and cons. And I think, I think fitting is great. I think you can narrow it down uh, a lot quicker. Sure. With all the ball speed and, yeah. and how far it's going and, and figuring out. But it's a lot of it's the ball too. You got to make sure if you're fitting, you're playing the ball that you play. Yeah makes sense but um we used to have bags and bags and bags they'd bring on the range i mean you couldn't even carry these bags there's so many clubs in them and they're not sets of clubs they're three woods five woods mm -hmm. not a lot of people carried five woods but uh one irons and drivers and you just pick a club out of the bag uh, and a shaft that you wouldn't even think yeah so i remember i was hitting next to this guy cliff kretzky and he couldn't hit this three wood to save his life i go let me try that thing and I hit it, and you know though, after one or two shots, if you're on the range, ooh, I kind of like that. Yeah. And then the problem is a uh, good player is gonna try to change their swing to fit the club, but that's yeah. not what you wanna do. Right. So it's usually two or three shots, and if it doesn't feel right, you move on. And I take I take this three wood, and I'm like, ooh, I play it for about five or six years. Wow. And I just grabbed it from him because he didn't like it, and I tried it. and. But like, it was wow, and then I started hitting yeah. it. Oh, I can draw it, cut it, high, low. Yeah, because it was I my mean, three wood. That was, and that was all you just kind of the yeah, feel, but also trial you watched and a couple trial shots. And yeah. But I th I did like that because that's what I was used to. But I think like what you said, you can um you can narrow it down way easier with 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 that. And I think the practice is way more efficient. Like yeah. my son's got a foresight and we don't have to hit as many balls because you kind of know that oh, you yeah. get it in the range and boom, I go, you just got to keep using that foresight. And there's a lot of games that you can use too, like for the kids out there, especially growing up in Minnesota, if you go to the simulator, tell yourself how far you're going to hit this shot, yeah. hit it, and then tell me how far you think it went and see if you can narrow it down. Now you're creating feel without seeing, right. mm -hmm. seeing the ball. So... I mean, there are, with all the technology, the practice has been even better in Minnesota. So, like, if my kids go down and play somewhere in Arizona in an amateur event, they're going to be closer to ready than sure than what yeah. I would have been. Yeah, yeah. There's it is fascinating to see how much that's changed things because it, it's true in the fitting you get all these information, you get the ball speed, you get launching. I mean, it, it can be overwhelming, on, but that's that's kind of. But the, you got Larry and uh, you know Aaron yeah. Roth. 
the yeah, that's Aaron right. Roth we like Aaron Roth yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. He, uh, well, his haircuts are fancy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll like that you threw that in there. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Aaron Aaron's fantastic too, and yeah. he he's got a pretty good list of players he's worked with as well. Yes, he has. Um, I I'm so fascinated by like the fact that you were able to play on tour and you're still playing the PGA Tour Champions now, and it, it seems like you still have this very kind of close connection locally here. Um, yeah, obviously with the restaurant here, family playing golf here, things like yeah. that. Um, I, it's, it really seems like, you know, in a way after having conversed with you now for a while, it, like this kind of connection to Minnesota has really shaped you and how you've kind of, I mean, you know, into your professional career now and, and afterwards and sort of looking back, it seems like uh, the connection to Minnesota and, and yeah. your family and stuff, it really yeah, has it's been you. great. So like when I walk around YZ, um, you know, I'm kind of local. I've been here kind of my whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, there's Tim. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Walking into my Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so I just thought of this. Um, I wasn't actually going to ask you about this, okay. um, but Lump Co. Um, very cool stuff on the website there. Yeah. And I, the, the, the master scripting, uh, you know, is, is just fantastic stuff. Um, for those who don't know on the website, you know, the, the master scripting that's on there. It's pretty good so, stuff. How do you yeah, come up with it's that? Yeah, good. So Eric Norby, who does some scripting and he does prank packaging yeah. and things like that, he's pretty much a comedian. Yeah, we we're actually sitting here having a few Guinness. Of course. And, uh, That's how all started. Ideas yeah, start. I know. We just started <laughs> talking about what we can do, make it more fun. He's like, "Yeah, are you disappointed you're not in the Masters?" He, he goes, "Are you going to watch it?" I go, "Yeah, I mean, I'll watch a little bit." He goes, "Well." Why don't you watch it like a little more fun? And we were kind of giving, we started talking about Bubba, how he laid out, it was the first year where he was going to oh, lay yeah. out and mm -hmm. talk about every outfit. Yeah. Well, I just, when I used to get up, I go, I'd just wear the most non-wrinkled thing I could find, you know, you know, not matching or whatever. He had it all <laughs> scripted out yeah. what he was going to wear. So we kind of thought that was funny. I'm like, who does that? I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that I had, you know, underwear clean or yeah. something, right? So. <laughs> Anyways, so we kind of made fun of that, like, oh, I'm going to wear a bee, bee catcher outfit while I'm watching on Thursday. Yeah. And then, so we had we had a good time with that. And then th that's how Lumpco kind of rolled off. It started Bogey Pro and then Lumpco. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not as good technology and social media as my kids. Yeah. So I kind of try to get away from all that stuff yeah. and just kind of live in the moment. But, uh, you know, the kids are all into that. So I need to maybe get more and more involved well, it's just, in that, it's just a, it there's just some cool, you know, funky stuff. We got some there. great I mean, t-shirts too. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. t-shirts. There's a, uh, our there's last one's a, the best. Th what was that is one? Is it a, is it a, um, fat five or thin six? Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I like that one. That's right. That's good. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a divot collection on there too. Oh yeah. Divot collection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's fascinating stuff. Um, yeah. We've had some fun stuff and it wasn't to hurt anybody. You know how, it was just no, more no, it's, for it's, fun it's, stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, that's what that's what golf is. Yeah, um, it's 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 fun and and for you and your you know career, it's been golf's hard enough, man. Yeah, why make it harder? Exactly, exactly, exactly. and make it more make fun. it easy, so, more fun. Um, I think we have some some Guinness to finish up here. So let's uh, have some Guinness. But uh, cheers, thanks for cheers, having me. Yeah, thank you for joining yeah. Tim. This was fantastic. Um, thank you to McCormick's as well. Yeah, for, Tim for McCormick's the best. Yeah, he's the best. Um, if you're in Minnesota, especially near Lake Minnetonka, this is the place to get some food, get some Guinness. Um, Tim, thank you again for the time. Yeah, thank some you. Great stories and and some uh, some awesome conversation. Yeah, great. get out there and play some golf this spring, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs>